yeah, to lead on to that, kind of, to kind of lead on to that, we've got this news that happened just a few days ago, or a week ago, regarding Elon Musk and Twitter. And the headline reads as follows. Elon Musk becomes Twitter's biggest shareholder after taking a 9.2% stake to address its failure to adhere to free speech principles. The world's richest man owns a quadruple the shares of the founder, Jack Dorsey. His passive stake is valued to be $2.9 billion based on Friday's stock close. It has prompted Twitter's share price to soar 26% pre-market trading so pretty t interesting turn of events right if you're if you're familiar with elon musk you know he's had a very dicey relationship with twitter a dicey relationship a dicey relationship with kind of free speech and because he's a little bit of a troll or a shit poster online it made you know looking back it does make complete sense that he would actually buy some shares in twitter at first when he was doing those um questions and surveys which now it's been revealed that he was do doing these surveys on twitter that like he's polls about twitter and whether it's a free speech platform and whatnot um and by that time the deal was already getting sealed up to him to buy shares but obviously there was the ndas and whatnot and what and whatnot in place so people no one ever leaked the news and obviously i'm assuming that might have been insider trading if you were leaked it because people would have been able to invest in tech twitter beforehand then they got announced and share prices go up you obviously make a lot of money but that aside people at the time myself included i was just assuming he was saying those things about free speech on twitter because he was gearing up to maybe launch his own social media um, platform but what it looks like to me is that all the smartest people in the world are not trying to launch social media platforms they're either trying to fix what's available or they're taking an active stand and saying now nah, i'm not participating in this anymore but no one is really sitting there and trying to make the next facebook make the next instagram make the next twitter because it just requires too much work and it's a kind of a fool's errand like you could probably i remember who said it the investor paul graham said it on twitter i think recently you could possibly if you had enough talented designers and developers and product people you could just clone twitter all the best bits of it and just make your own version but you won't necessarily have the user base right and that's the obviously the hardest thing to kind of build from the ground up which probably might explain why tiktok is valued as much as it's valued because they've essentially got an entire hold an entire generation of kids who are just kind of addicted to that platform but it's very difficult to launch your own so maybe it makes sense for him to buy into something that he thinks isn't working and try and fix it from the inside but it also goes to show just as a general rule of thumb in life it does pay again not pay it's probably way more if again if, if you've got the funds to do so it's probably way more constructive and useful to try to get in the ring participate and try to fix things from the inside than just screaming about it like from the outside like you're just barking at the moon it was way more easier that way or making your own it's way more easier um fair enough it's not going to be no it's 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 probably way more constructive and helpful to the cause that you're fighting for not easier it's going to be very difficult to get it off the ground but it's going to be a far better um it'll probably release a far better outcome because of the press you know around it um supposedly he's going to do a town hall sit down with some people at twitter to talk about what he plans to do with the platform blah 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 but i think it's a really positive step in the right direction personally for me because i've for the last year or so since the pandemic has spent way more time on twitter than i've ever spent in my entire life i think if you look back at my twitter feed from like pre-2020 i probably hardly used that space and now since the pandemic i've been on there all the time and i have to legitimately say like it might be the premier social media platform because I'll, I'll describe reddit as a social media platform people probably wouldn't but i think so reddit social media too i think it's only maybe second or maybe a close tie with reddit like Twitter is amazing for the news you get breaking, for the different accounts you can follow around the world, from the way the algorithm kind of plots stuff on your home feed, the Twitter trending stuff, the Twitter space has now become a big, big thing, especially for me in like football Twitter. We're on there all the time, ranting and raving after a win or a loss for our team, um, transfer speculations. There's been beef on there recently. There's been that whole note reality. There's harsh reality gnosis with the guy called as that sits down there uk dude that talks about culture events here in the uk in terms of you know black culture and whatnot it's really fun it's really really fun platform um it probably isn't the best in terms of original content generation like for yourself as a user maybe outside of fashion twitter i don't see a lot of people actually sharing interesting pictures or stuff they're working on it's mostly just like stunting having a good time funny shit well i mean entertainment it's not really anything else like that um, but as a platform it's flipping supreme and obviously to get your thoughts out there as a sort of like mini blog forum as a mini blog platform sort of thing it works amazingly so i'm not really surprised that he would try to get involved that way anyway the article says as follows 
Elon Musk has become Twitter's largest shareholder after buying 9.2 cents stake in the social media company, the world's richest man worth 273 billion nearly 75 shares um uh, bought nearly 75 million shares um a document five for the u.s secretary of State. it means tesla co-founder has more than quadruple shares of twitter founder jack dawson which is interesting who owns 2.5 percent his passive stake in the company is valued at 2.9 based on the stock's friday close and the estimated cost of the deal is 2.4 so he's obviously not buying it for the money obviously it's a good investment because for the most part i think twitter will survive an apocalypse but it's definitely a thing of him being like hey i want this platform to be far more enjoyable i spend a lot of my time on here it's brought me a lot of joy and if i can play a part in it i'm gonna do so the news prompted twitter stock to soar blah 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 um continues here must um share the must stake in twitter is considered a passive investment which means he is long-term investor with us looking to minimize his buying and selling of the shares yeah and supposedly they put like a stipulation in him buying the shares that you couldn't buy more than i think 14.95 so you can't have a majority that's basically in it so that's what he's got is what he can have or to that you know to that limit he can't be the majority owner of twitter because i guess they got nervous because they don't like him as a person and he might be one of the other next big accounts to end up getting locked off anyway it says here um da, 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 we would expect his passive ink stake to no we would expect this passive stake as just the start of a broader communications with twitter's board of management that could ultimately lead to an active stake and a potential for more aggressive ownership or twitter says dan ives of the wedbush securities passive investment is a strategy for slowly sorry for slowly building wealth by long-term ownership of stocks rather than engaging in frequent trading which is often accompanied by additional fees and can be more volatile musk could try to take a more aggressive stance with twitter this eventually could lead to more um to some some sort of buyout uh, the, the the shares held by Elon Musk uh revocable trust uh, the, the mogul has raised in questions about the ability to communicate freely on Twitter tweeting last month that free speech and social media platform he says I hereby challenge a single combat to come the so yeah serving it given that Twitter serves as a this is a tweet from him from May to March 26 given that Twitter serves as the de facto public public town square failing to adhere to free speech principles fundamentally undermines democracy that what should be done is it is a new platform needed and obviously did a poll i definitely agree with this kind of um phrase of twitter being the public town square i think i heard jordan peterson say it once before too I mean, that might be the first time i heard it which is why i always thought in my opinion like him or hate him i always thought getting rid or deleting um donald trump from all social media platforms at the time he was a sitting president of the united states was absolutely insane batshit insane because he said some mean things on there or he upset certain people like that was insane legitimately insane i never understood that there should be rules in place where you just can't ban or delete a sitting president's um social media platform because at the time especially when he was being very volatile and sort of uh purposely trolling people it was maybe constructive to have him be able to say what's actually on his mind on the platform such as twitter and be so impulsive that's probably a good thing you probably want to keep an eye on what he's thinking and how he's going about things so that you can kind of interject if need be or you can maybe kick kick a fuss about it or whatnot deleting him from twitter if, if anything has maybe emboldened his fan base even more and i think there's evidence that this is just suggests the fact right um i'm not sure if the capital thing happened after his ban or before his ban but if it did happen after his ban it goes to show how popular he has been even in defeat right there's still people out there still saying oh trump won you know he's still not my president in terms of biden all that sort of stuff all that nonsense and the let's go brandon stuff right he's still got a big family so i think part of it was to do with him being deleted but obviously the precedent was set with alex jones when that coordinated attack happened with alex jones i thought that was a bit balmy as well um i get the whole sandy hook thing but i just i don't know for me i've always been a free speech absolutist and if we're gonna go by the public town square thing if there was a wacko on the public town square spouting absolute shit similar to like those um people from um what's that church the church that holds up those signs that says god hates fags and all that sort of nonsense right those people you just ignore them they're in they're in oxford street they're in you know most metropolitan cities spouting all their flipping um homophobic stuff that they're putting on placards there you know um 
kind of disguised under the guise of flipping religion they're all doing it outdoors but we have a way of kind of just ignoring them and kind of pretending that, that they don't exist if that's the case why don't we do it on social media why does it have to be that you have to be deleted and taken off because somehow you have a platform no you don't you're in a you're in a public square t- town square if people want to come on your platform and listen to what you have to say it's up to them but you shouldn't be removed from having an ability to speak that's just insane because if 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 you delete Trump from Twitter and you say he can't speak because he says mean stuff that essentially means he might as well not be alive you might as well not exist because when's the last time you heard a, a Trump fall I'll wait but when's the last time you heard Trump say something about the current things going on in society outside of a Fox interview or something or whatever you don't hear it because he's, he's deleted from all social media platforms he essentially doesn't exist like it's insane and we do the same things ourselves right if you want a ghost or you feel like you've spent too much time on social media what's the first thing everyone does they stop posting on instagram they stop posting on twitter they don't like stuff they delete apps from their phone it's the same thing it's basically like you don't exist that's basically what it is and when people see you in real life like oh my god i haven't seen you in ages why because they haven't seen you on social media so i think it's a good thing that he's gonna be you know, you know a part of twitter's board and hopefully he brings some sort of positive change there because i feel like at the moment these twitter guys are bugging out man they really are bugging out and a good example of them bugging out is this article courtesy of the bbc that says here elon Musk to answer twitter staff questions because you know on the announcement or post the announcement of him buying shares into twitter people were panicking like panicking online especially if some of the you know tech startup social media analyst sort of glitterati scene the sort of you know the muppets like taylor lorenzo and all those people they were having flipping twitter spaces and who's the other guy that wears glasses and thinks she's a badass that donut right all those people they were having these twitter spaces crying at the fact that elon musk is going to be uh, you know a minority owner of flipping twitter and i was thinking to myself like how does one guy have so much power how does he scare so many people this 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 type of dude right this very uncalled dorky um somewhat lame guy who is a super genius and obviously very influential in some way shape or form really really puts the the heebie-jeebies on some people out in society and maybe that's a good thing that's a sign of a good thing that he scares so many people um going forward but anyway this article says as follows it says twitter employees will have a opportunity to hear elon musk out to hear, hear, hear from elon musk about his vision for the platform it follows Musk's purchase of a 9.2 percent of the social media platform in an email on thursday staff were invited to quiz to test the founder and billionaire over his intentions and of course we'll get the full transcript later on so i'm looking forward to that one there'll be speculation there's been speculation of what changes musk would like to see made to social network the company-wide meeting known as the town hall all hands are typically run by the chief executive or senior member of the executive oh imagine how cool that might be man you're working in twitter all this time the funny thing at twitter too if i'm not mistaken didn't jack dorsey do the whole like permanent remote working thing he might be one of the first founders from that whole startup scene or from silicon valley quote unquote who decided in a post-pandemic world maybe coming into the office wasn't beneficial to everybody and obviously especially if you want to improve or expand your workforce having the ability for people to work in different time zones allows you to kind of poach the best talent and it also allows people you know the opportunity to just work from home and to you know basically you know take their kids to school and whatnot maybe do a a flipping side course here an adult course in the evening whatever it may be but i'm pretty sure they have a really swanky office building somewhere is it in san fran i'm pretty sure it was I think it was Twitter. They, they made they had some before the pandemic actually. They they bought some amazing headquarters, right? Building, and then now most of their employees are working from home. And I'm pretty sure Elon isn't a fan of working from home, so that should be interesting because I'm pretty sure he's like the guy that does the whole like sleeping in the Tesla factory to show his employees that he's really serious and he's you know doing everything he can to make sure that Tesla hits their manufacturing target. So that'll be interesting kind of little I think beef that they have. The company-wide meeting, the, the shareholders such as Musk are not usually invited to such events, let alone asked to host an open, open session with staff The Washington Post reported. Many Twitter employees have felt disgruntled by the announcement earlier this week that the entrepreneur had become the large shareholder in company and was subsequently invited to join the board. That's one of the fallacies of startups, isn't it? And I've worked in plenty. This idea that you actually have a say in the company's direction overall is just insane. That you actually get to question people's decision-making process outside of your actual knowledge or expertise or no, fair enough ha- have a suggestion but the fact that they feel like oh you're empowered that you have the ability to steer the, this company in the direction where it should go is nonsense i've never understood that, that to be beneficial or helpful in any way shape or form maybe consider consultation is one thing but actually influencing stuff is mad like all that all that big 
you know, big vision, overarching vision stuff should be left to CEOs and co-founders and whatever, whatever your role is, you should focus on that. You actually help the company way more when you focus on your job and try and do the best that you can at it every single day than maybe trying to guide and, you know, force, no, guide or kind of inform the overall vision of a company. But they do all these wif wafty stuff to kind of make you feel like you're part of the team and really in truth anyway, whatever they decide to do, they decide to do anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Now, um, according to Company Insiders, there's an anxiety over the impact it will have on social media company, a bit to moderate content on the site. They already ban everyone anyway. I don't know why they're nervous about that. Um, Musk has not specified what he wants to do the board member, but he has intimated that he is, does not intend to remain passive in the role with a recent tweet pointing to significant improvements in Twitter in the coming months. So yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, big up Elon. I think it's going to be a really good change. Change is necessary. Even if it's going to come at this abrupt stage, it is definitely necessary.